Uh, Who defines who I am? Who defines my life? Notice how Peter begins this last letter uh, to the Christians scattered around the empire. He begins it with telling us who he is. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. And also, he tells us who he's writing to, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As Christians, this is who we are. Peter reminds us that our life is not defined by our circumstances, Our life is defined by God. And as a Christian, we've been blessed by God. We're under his blessing through his son, the Lord Jesus. So that means that as a Christian, I'm in the best position possible going into 2021. And you say, but I am getting older. Well, we are all getting older, aren't we? You say, I'm approaching the end of life. Well, actually, we're all dying aren't we? Uh, The battle inside of us is raging. Yes, sin remains as a constant with us in this world. Uh, And the battle, of course, goes on outside as Christians are not immune from the fallen world and the realities of a corrupt and cursed world, including hostility against Christians. But, But that's not the big picture, is it? Because that leaves out God. Uh, It's not the most important reality that governs our life. As Christians, that reality is God's promised blessing. It's God's eternal purpose, God's good purpose. Notice Peter's pastoral emphasis here. It's all about remembering, verse 12. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them, and are firmly establishing the truth you now have. I think it's right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside. As our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me, and I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. This morning we can only touch really on some of the elements of this passage. It's a great passage to go back to time and time again, because Peter, as he's reminding the Christians about what's important, is giving them a framework how to think, believe and live. And you'll notice there that as you go through this passage, spiritual maturity is about knowing what's true and also living that out today and tomorrow. And living it out, of course, in the context of the fact that life is difficult. And as a Christian, life can be particularly difficult because you're following another king. And so as we go into 2021, we can... Uh, predict, can't we, without the details, but we can predict that this is going to be a difficult year. There are going to be challenges. And as the church seeks to grapple with pastoral ministry into the future, there's going to be challenges of thinking and about putting things into practice and about trusting God. Uh, Peter writes to a community that's facing suffering, and you can read about that in 1 Peter especially, but also a community that's under the constant threat of false teaching, and false teaching is everywhere, and it's often subtle. And it often grows when God's word is minimised or sidelined or only referred to when convenient and not actually trusted in and submitted to as the norm. And so if 2020 has made us think a little bit more seriously about God's word and about God's purposes, then that actually means it's a very good year for us because as this passage makes clear, God is for our godliness. God is for our eternal life, our transformed life now and forever. That's the good purpose that he is after. So in this passage, uh, quickly we see three big things that we can highlight. Firstly, remember what you have in verses 1 to 4. Verse 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 
Now, of course, the, the message of our culture is that you don't have everything you need. You need to have more and here's another product, here's another experience, uh, here's a new way of going about life. There's so much more you need to get. But these words that Peter reminds us of here, that we have everything as those who are in a right relationship with God through Christ, is our counter, isn't it? It's our counter as Christians to a, a kind of um, discouraged pessimism or a proud optimism. Uh, it's the counter, isn't it, to the enticement of the lotto ticket that will change everything for us. It's the counter to the all-encompassing career that actually, um, actually crowds out our life living for God's kingdom. It's our, our counter to the affair. It's our in, uh, counter to the self-indulgent retirement plans we might have. Uh, it's our counter to the fears of a virus or to the rising power of China. Uh, it's our counter to even declining health and impending death. Uh, this is our encouragement too, isn't it? To trust the promises of God, the purposes of God, uh, to love his church, to, to serve gospel-centred ministry despite the costs that might be involved in that. We have everything we need for life and godliness. And that also means that we have what other people need as well. So as Christians, we have everything we need for the most important things of life, for real life. And verse 4 reminds us of this importance. Through these, he's given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. See, Peter's very mindful that as Christians we're on a journey. We're on a journey to the fulfilled and perfected new creation. This is not our home. Our home is to come. And the, the process and the way to get there is a process of battle with sin. And yet God's given us everything we need to get there and to actually overcome through the battle. How has he done that? Well, it's all as we've been thinking about this morning in our songs by grace. Verse 1, To those who through the righteousness of our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need and verse 4, through these, he's given us his very great and precious promises. If you're a Christian, you're a Christian because God has been gracious to you. And that includes your faith. We often think, in, don't we, about our faith. But our faith has actually been given to us. That's how dependent we are upon God. There's no way that we would have suddenly woken up to think that we need to escape our sinful desires and then had the ability to do that ourselves. There's no way that we would have naturally embraced Jesus because he's the king standing against our self-rule. Now, even our faith is in Christ, isn't it? It's not in ourself. Not in our efforts, it's not in our merit, it's not in our achievements, it's through the righteousness of Christ. And that's why Peter at the end of this letter finishes with that simple phrase, but grow in the grace of the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, your faith has to be connected to the right knowledge. And that's all of God's grace, but without that knowledge then you don't actually know God. You don't actually trust God. You won't trust God. And Peter again reminds us of our importance. The truth is here. Verse 2, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 
Verse 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. And you can keep going through the passage to see the importance of this knowledge. One of the Bible study books that's been written on 2 Peter uh, is headed that phrase, everything you need to know. This is the knowledge of God and his gracious salvation that God has given us from first to last and it's a knowledge centred in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the only foundation of faithful life and fruitful ministry. This is what it means to be Christians who are being built up in the gospel. Uh, It's only as we actually grapple with the knowledge that God has given us through his word that actually helps us to understand what the gospel really is and to trust it, to know who God really is and to trust and follow him. So we need to remember that we have everything we need and Peter then says, remember what to do, verses 5 to 11 and he gives us this list, doesn't he, uh, here of different characteristics Uh, And so if we understand that we've been given everything we need in Christ, then we will actually show that by living a distinctive life. We'll live lives that reflect God's priorities, which reflect being like God, like his son. We will show what it means to belong to God and to belong to his family. Uh, And if you think about it, that, of course, is what glorifies God. Because when people look at us, they should see a reflection of how great and gracious he is. Maybe a very faint one. It will be a very faint one. But it can be true. And so they will also see true knowledge of God reflected. Notice what God regards as the fruits of spiritual substance as opposed to success. For this reason, verse 5, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, to goodness knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is how we need to assess our Christian life. This is how we need to uh, regard the fruitfulness of the church. Not by how many activities we can actually support, but by the characteristics of transformed lives. How we relate to God, how we honour God, how we relate to one another. So this is a great uh, list, isn't it, Uh, that I'm sure is uppermost in our minds every time we walk through the doors here at church. I think as I come to church, my priority is going to be to add to my faith goodness, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, perseverance. And not just when we come for the hour on Sunday, but when we come to a practice, when we come to any meeting of the church, when we're involved in business meetings, This is the fruit that God is seeking. Because God can accomplish anything he wants to accomplish. This is what he wants to accomplish in our lives. And we need to prioritise that. This is another way of saying what matters is not what is seen to be earthly gain, but what is of godliness. This is what is productive now and forever. God is after new people. He's after a new creation. And this is important for us, isn't it? Because when we go to funerals, and I've conducted so many funerals over this past 11 years, what's important so often for people is to uh, be able to stand up here and tell people about the achievements or the earthly gain of the person who's just died. But of course the funerals that are truly impressive 
And again, there have been many of those here as well, are those where God is glorified, where what has been testified to is the characteristics of godliness in the lives of people, whatever their social status, whatever their background, this is the thing that matters. Again, we need to think like this. Who are the most productive people in the church? They may not be the people that naturally come to mind. God is glorified and represented well in the world through people who are actually like him. People who are truly forgiven and are truly new. And so when you're looking for a pastor, you should look for a pastor who understands that and will be encouraging to you to be like that, not just a pastor who wants to grow the church to some impressive size. God does that, that's wonderful. But God is after new people. And finally, remember that it's true. Verse 12 to 21, Paul, uh, Peter wants to remind them of the truth. Verse 16, we didn't follow cleverly invented stories when you to told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Verse 19, we have the word of the prophets made more certain and you do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Uh, some of you may remember John Chapman, who was a well-known Australian evangelist in Sydney and had the privilege of having him sometimes uh, uh, lecturing to us uh, on evangelism particularly. But uh, I remember one time he was speaking and he was saying um, what gets him up in the morning to read his Bible, to pray, to get out of bed and seek first the kingdom is the truth of Jesus was Jesus really born into this world? Did Jesus really live the way he lived? Did he really die for my sins? Did he really rise again? Is he really the reigning Lord who will return one day to make all things right? Yes, those things are true. And if you understand that they're true, then you will actually live that way. But you'll have to be reminded of that because so much in this world and even your own desires will cause you to doubt that it's true. There are so many factors in our culture that seek to dismiss God's word or to undermine God's word. And the reason Peter is saying this is because he actually wants, again, his readers to reach the finishing line. Look at verse 12. So I will always remind you of these things even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. He wants them to get to that day when they'll actually witness and experience the reality of the Lord Jesus' majesty and all the purposes of God coming to fulfilment. For example, in verse 19, that's what his allusion to there is all about. As a pastor, Peter's not concerned with so much that's just superficial. He's concerned about substance. Uh, many of you would remember the, the movie Chariots of Fire with Eric Liddell um, uh, running as he did uh, and running as a Christian and, of course, ultimately going to be a missionary in China. Uh, and in the movie, when you watch that depiction, of course, uh, his running style is quite unique, isn't it? Uh, it's not the most impressive running style, but he actually gets to the finish line well. And of course, for him, running was so much more than athletics. And that's what Peter wants for his readers, and that's what we should be concerned about, to get to the end well. It's the same 
uh, emphasis that you find in Paul. For example, in the pastoral epistle of 2 Timothy, where he's reminding Timothy of what ministry is all about. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9, But God's word is not chained, therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Uh, And as a pastor, uh, however feebly, that's actually been my aim. My aim is actually to get you to the end well so that when you face the Lord Jesus, that he actually welcomes you into his kingdom. Because in the end, that's the most important thing that matters. And that's why I've emphasised preaching, teaching God's word, because again, that is how you know what is true and are not simply relying on your own ideas or even your own wishes. You see, we need to be discerning, don't we, about what scripture says and what spiritual speculators say. Because it's the difference between what God says and what the Holy Spirit says and what is only the fallible and fleeting ideas of people. If you're a Christian, you're going into 2021 in the best position you could possibly be in. And I encourage you to read through this passage again later this week. But as you do, remember what's most important. You have everything you need. You have everything to do, the most productive life to live. And you have the most trustworthy word to live by. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are so gracious and great to save us from first to last, to provide us with everything we need to live life, Help us to recognise that even when it's difficult to remember it. Help us to realise that when we're distracted about things that don't really matter. Help us to see things your way as we keep coming back to your word and relying and resting and running the race according to what you have revealed. Pray this in Jesus' name.